Good afternoon, everyone. I have with me Robert Felix. You know him as the author of Not by Fire, But by Ice. He runs the website iceagenow.info, where you can find an enormous amount of information on our changing climate. In addition, he's also written the book Magnetical Reversals and Evolutionary Leaps, which is timely as well because the magnetic excursion on our planet. These two books alone will explain all of the changes going on on our planet at this moment in time. The intensification of the grand solar minimum, the cycles in our sun, the galactic cosmic rays, Birkeland currents, the electrification of our atmosphere, and the telluric currents on our Earth's surface, and how this is going to affect all of us. It is literally a reset button for society. Looking back through the cycles of history, crop production has a very difficult time holding on in these cooler conditions. And our planet is starting to cool. And the global media is in damage control now, trying to explain that, oh, the last 30 years that we've told you of information is actually not really correct. Robert, I am so grateful that you're with me so we can try to explain some of these changes coming forward. Because as electromagnetic beings, we all feel something's just not right at the moment. And I have a great feeling that's connected to the sun, electromagnetically through our solar system and what we're experiencing on Earth. So telluric currents, not a lot of people have heard of those, but people have heard of ley lines. And we're talking about ancient cultures. It seemed that a lot of the megaliths that were built were on the intersections of these ley lines, or at least marking out where these energy grids are on the planet. Talking about cosmic rays as well, a lot of peer-reviewed research in the last three years coming out pinpointing that these cosmic rays excite magma chambers, specifically silica-rich magma chambers, and this is where we get into these larger volcanic eruptions, year without a summer. And it seems the ones that are on the equatorial bands have a much more grandiose effect, I don't know, cooling the atmosphere than the more regional, more northerly type of eruptions. So you're in Washington. If you have a Cascadia eruption, it's not going to have the cooling punch that something down along the Indonesian chain or Papua New Guinea chain would have. But it's all based on cosmic rays. So you can start to see how many effects are weakened magnetosphere moving into the future but when you're talking about the cosmic rays triggering the volcanoes and and the magma, magma chambers and i'd like to interject here about the underwater volcanoes because please do because you know when i started writing not by fire but by ice when i started writing that in 1991 scientists thought there were there were probably 10 thousand underwater volcanoes in the entire world that's what they thought there were and they thought those they would have nothing to do with the climate well then in 1993 they discovered another uh, 1100 underwater volcanoes off the coast of easter island they didn't even know where had been there so they increased the world supply of, of underwater volcanoes by 10 percent in just a matter of months but uh, but still, the scientists said that you know underwater volcanoes can't possibly affect the climate. Now now that was in 1993. Now NASA estimates that there are probably more than three million underwater volcanoes, and yet I still hear them saying that they would have nothing to do with the climate. Three million underwater volcanoes, and those things, you know, they're not all active today, but so many of them, they figure that probably more than 100,000 of them are active, and they are pumping uh, magma into the seas that's more than 2,000 degrees hot. I mean, how can we possibly think that they're not affecting the climate? But what I see is that during, a, a, as our magnetic field weakens, that Mag that, that volcanic activity on land, such as the Cascadia zone that you're talking about, but that that uh, that volcanic activity on land increases, which is means that it's cooling the skies. But at the same time, where we can't see it, that the underwater volcanic activity increases, that starts to heat the oceans, and that, of course, causes more evaporation. And, and so that evaporation, that moisture climbs into the skies that have been cooled by underwater, by above water volcanoes, and you've got an ice age. And, and that's, I mean, let's face it, that's where 
the moisture comes from to create those huge those huge sheets of ice in Canada. Uh, during the last ice age, most of Canada was covered by two miles of ice, but at the same time, sea levels were about 400 feet lower than they are today. That's that's where the that's where the all of the 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 moisture comes from to build those ice sheets. You know, Indonesia was actually connected to the mainland. Uh, and it was almost con connected to the Philippines. Uh, Indonesia uh, was the size of a huge continent just during the last during the last uh, ice age, and that's going to happen again um, in in the United States. Florida was twice as big as it is today. Uh, New Jersey, the shoreline was a hundred miles further east than it is today. So. I see that is going to be happening. So, by the way, when I hear all of this talk, all this malarkey about uh, rising sea levels, well, of course sea levels are rising. Sea levels, sea levels have been rising for the last 11,000 years, ever since the Ice Age ended. Uh, and, and I expect to see them going down again. In, in, uh, in 2010, sea levels declined slightly. In 2011, sea levels declined slightly. In 2016, sea levels declined slightly. So, you know, I, I expect we're going to be seeing more and more sea level decline as we enter into the Ice Age. To go out on a, a side note here, with those lower ocean levels, I'm wondering what types of cities from the previous civilization, because I am in firm belief now, you can agree or disagree. It's just my opinion. It's my firm belief that there was a prior civilization, perhaps even two, that were at least as advanced in our own technology, if not higher, using different types of energy systems. But think about that. If they're coastal, where do we build our cities today? We build them next to rivers. We build them next to coasts. If you look around each continent, you know, the heaviest area of density and population is along the coastal areas. So imagine if that coast moves, like you're talking 100 miles, that's 160 kilometers. And it's in an area in depth that we as you know, recreational scuba divers can't even get to. At 130 feet, you need to decompress for how long? But you're talking about something that's three, 400 feet underwater. You know, what is the Navy mapped sonar-wise out there? You talked about the studies, well, how did they come up to the conclusions of how many new volcanoes they discovered? It's because of the underwater mapping technology and the 3D sonar, which has gotten so good. I'm just really curious what they have found off the coasts of our continents from the previous, I should say, civilization, because at that point, the Ice Age and the increasing ice would have wiped them out. I don't care how technologically advanced you are. Climate is going to win every single time. And we are so fragile right now. You know, our electrical grids are so fragile, but these systems and cycles of Earth Building and cleansing and repeating and rinse and repeat over hundreds of thousands of years has started again. And I don't know what we're going to do with our food supply. <laughs> it all comes back to that same thing it, again. It does, back to that food supply. And I don't know that we have time to, to do anything about it. Well, during little ice ages, that's one of the things that happened during the, the 1600s. That's why so many witches were burned at the stake, is is in Europe, the, they would have huge hailstorms that, that wiped out the crops. And of course, as we're doing today, they wanted to blame humans. So they would blame the local, quote, witch and burn her at the stake. Uh, there's a astrophysicist, Sally Baliunas, out of, out of uh, Harvard, that uh, that she somewhere on my website I've got a video when she's talking about it, but uh, she figures that fifty thousand people, fifty thousand so-called witches, were burned at the stake during the Little Ice Age because uh, because the crops were being destroyed and they had to blame it on somebody. And now, of course, we're we're trying to blame it on humans again, but. Uh, you know, if a farmer loses his entire crops for a couple of years in a row, uh, he's probably got his whole farm mortgaged, and all of a sudden he can't make his payments, and he's going to go out of business. And he's not going to have time or the money or the wherewithal to suddenly move a couple hundred miles south in order to start a new farm. So 
and and so much of our our world is based on on just in time delivery, which I don't blame them. That's how it has to be. But I don't know if we have time to to correct that. I'm I'm going to suggest that uh, people would better have their own garden. Uh, they 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 might want to have their own greenhouse. All right, and you've been listening to David Dubine and Robert Felix, author of Not by Fire but by Ice and Magnetic Reversals and Evolutionary Leaps. Also, the website IceAgeNow.info with the latest following the changes in our climate, in the cooler weather that we're experiencing, and the other knock-on effect in our society. I appreciate your time, Robert. Thank you so much. Thank you, David.